On an initial walk around um, the museum, I went into the Fletcher Gallery and that looks at taste and elegance in Georgian bars. And then I noticed this drawer and on the drawer it said sugar and slavery. And I kind of thought, oh, this must be, well, what is this? And so I opened the drawer and I see this book. I see the Plantation Day book from Bob Ados, 1722. And the book is there, um, just sort of squashed into an acrylic case, laid flat on top of the Brooks image of slaves squashed into a ship. And I was really intrigued about the book. I just kind of, I didn't know what it was. And our current interpretation, well, the interpretation that was there, um, just sort of said that it belonged to Guy Ball, so William Holbein's great-grandfather, who owned plantations in Barbados. It didn't tell you anything about the book itself. So when we had a look at the book, books like this would have contained names of enslaved people on the plantation, not just produce coming in and out. So, I mean, they were accounting tools. They were used by plantation owners to record transactions of sales. And um, those sales were not just products, they involved people. In a weird way, there was something special about holding an item that is so old. But then, it's, that is a very innocent way of looking at it, and it's not an innocent object. And when you think about the lives of people and, uh, you know, it's, it's a horrific part of British history um, that that book re represents. The most intriguing thing I think about our book is that pages have been cut out, which is really odd and, and surprising and, you know, raises so many questions, like, why did this happen? But then at the same time, there is a single page left that has writing on. So it's just cocoa, candles and beef are the transactions left in the book. There's no names and there's no explanation, obviously, for why that's happened. One of the things that had to be included was family history in some way, so the Holborn family's history. It's not maybe the most palatable, glorifying history that people would have wanted, but it is Holborn family history, it, and ultimately it's, it's the truth. And that was obviously inspired by the book and the fact that it is from the family and that there were links to plantations in Barbados and then the deeper I looked the more I found that they were connected to Antigua, they were uh, connected to Jamaica as well um, and the display does sort of show through uh, three main families how the Holborn Museum and their family were connected to the slave trade. There's a current interest, I suppose, in looking at colonial legacies. So it does bring the Holborn into those discussions. But also it's what people requested. So I, you know, I talked to people and I did listen. In terms of the book itself, after being in that drawer for, I think, at least 10 years, I thought, well, it deserves its own case. It's got to have its own case. It's quite a sight to behold when you're standing there looking at it. But the idea sort of remained of using the display in some way to also speak for the missing pages. And so what we've done is uh, collaborated with Barbados Museum to reproduce some names of enslaved people on the plinth. And that is a huge deal, I think, because it symbolizes remembrance and remembrance of memorializing this aspect of British history is something that just isn't done 
it just doesn't happen. Like when we think about the reverence and how meaningful it is um, when we uh, sort of see displays about the war effort, the British war effort and war veterans um, and how proud Britain is of that. And we'll say, you know, when we think about how the Holocaust is remembered and how respectful that is and how important and meaningful that is to people, there doesn't, there isn't that sense of remembrance or collective respect for the slave trade and for who is affected by the slave trade. And, you know, those effects still are manifested today. They're manifested in our daily lives, like collectively in Britain, whether you're white or black or brown, or, you know, if you're a migrant from another um, country with white skin, you know, those kinds of, those kinds of issues are still around. So it's not in the past, definitely not in the past. It's important to me because my heritage is Indian Caribbean and I would like to sort of put it out there, you know, who knows um, about Indian Caribbean indentured workers? Who knows that that came after slavery was abolished? Um, you know, slaves, uh, enslaved people in the Caribbean were emancipated in 1834. But then the British started to take people from India to replace that labor in the Caribbean in 1838. It's just another revised form of slavery. And so the last two panels of the display engage with social history aspects. And we've taken an object that was essentially hidden in plain sight and used it to tell stories about people, used it to give access to truth to the public um, to engage with. And so, yeah, the last two panels engage with black and white individuals and mixed race individuals, actually, either from Bath and Somerset or who visited Bath and Somerset. And those individuals are from Georgian and Victorian times, and they were either anti-slavery campaigners or demonstrated a form of black agency, which is something I think we don't really associate with those time periods. And sort of having that in the room that talks about Georgian elegance and splendor and luxury, you know, it's the elephant in the room that it deserves its own sort of spot. Another like lovely collaboration to have come out of this was with um, the Barbadian Glaswegian artist Alberta Whittle. As alongside the reproduced names of enslaved people from that plantation on the plinth of the book, I had always wanted to have an epitaph to, to really sort of show that level of respect. Alberta agreed to write it and she's produced a really, really beautiful, I think, epitaph that we have on the, the front of the plinth. And I, I'm very proud of that, very proud of that collaboration. Connections were made during making this display that really drove it for me. Um, and there was a real sense of empowerment across those connections for me. Uh, so really, I think I'd like to just add that I hope that there are three main themes, three main takeaways from this display. So I mean, the first one is acceptance. So acceptance that, yes, the Holborn family were involved in the slave trade. This is how. They were connected through marriages, through naval links, and through investments in the slave trade. And having the countries there, Antigua, Barbados, and Jamaica, sort of, you know, it brings it home, I think. It shows the connection between here and there that you don't tend to think about when you think about British colonialism. You think about it happening elsewhere. Then I think remembrance, obviously, is too. 
respect and remembrance for what is normally silenced, what has traditionally been silenced. And the third theme, I hope, is empowerment. Um, empowerment knowing that there is a history of resistance, that it wasn't just something that happened at the time, that was a thing of the past that people just went along with. And sure, people did go along with it, but people also were extremely angry um, and absolutely against what was happening to them, against the injustice of what was happening to other people. So that's what that display shows, that people from multi-ethnic backgrounds came together, Brits, people from America, um, you know, came together to actively resist uh, racism, violence, dehumanising processes. And I think that that hopefully will empower people. Um, it's an empowering message for today. I'm very proud and excited that this is a permanent display because it's something that can be engaged with over a long period of time. It, it's not gonna go away and it shouldn't go away because the legacy of colonialism hasn't gone away, it's here. And ultimately, it's got to be explained, it's got to be there to allow the opportunity for people to change their minds about things. Um, and you can't change anything if you don't know about it. Thank you.